When Jesus was clearing out his followers after his restoration, he guaranteed to supplicate to God to send them a comforter, an individual of the sacred soul. To fulfill this guarantee, the devotees gotten him on the day of Pentecost. But that guarantee wasn't elite to the devotees alone. Each child of God need to be portion of that favoring. Uh, of course, a Christian with a heavenly soul is favored past degree. It goes past fair talking in tongues. Can you review the change, the control, intelligence, and certainty that came over them, and numerous more things that happened within the lives of the followers after they gotten him? But shockingly, numerous Christians in our days are, however, to encounter this. And a tremendous portion of those who claim to have gotten this heavenly soul, fair since they can talk in tongues, are distant from living a changed life. Like 2 in Timothy chapter 3 appropriately said, having a frame of godliness, but they need the control thereof. So how can you tell merely, are somebody near to you as the sacred soul of God? Of course, there are distinctive spirits in this conclusion time, on the off chance that the book of scriptures can record that the demon can regularly show as the blessed messenger of light, at that point, beyond a reasonable doubt, cherished. Numerous individuals parading the church of God nowadays can be talking in tongues of the fiend and working beneath his soul as well. That is why you should be able to discern a person with the Holy Spirit of God. You don't need to fast and pray to know this over and over again from the days of the Bible. Until now, there has been a consistency in the way of life of those who claim to be filled with the genuine Spirit of God. They've got specific habits. Before we go on, please subscribe to this channel if you are yet to, and ensure you watch to the end, as this is a very powerful message that will change your spiritual life. So, what are the habits of a person genuinely filled with the Holy Spirit? Number one, Evidence of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, influences the manifestation of certain qualities within you. These go a long way toward enabling you to produce His fruits. These are all embedded in Galatians 522-23, which says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If your flesh is not crucified, then the Spirit of God can't dwell in you. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, God's love will always radiate around your life. And it doesn't stop there. This divine love begins to rub off on the people you come in contact with. If you look at love from the human perspective, you might not care about the people around you, the flesh him. You will focus on your desires, not minding what others are going through. More still, you'll find yourself being selective of the people you show love to. But the Holy Spirit enables you to extend sincere love and compassion to everyone, regardless of belief, race, or background. And because your actions are in line with the Spirit, you will find yourself serving and empathizing with others without condition. And as a result, you will become a shining light to your generation. How about faith, joy, and peace amid the storms of life? Faith is compelling yourself to believe what does not exist. The truth is it takes the grace of God to trust God without physical manifestations. And this trust comes with having the Holy Spirit in your life. He engenders faith that will move mountains in your life. And as you trust in God, you're changed from fear to experience in peace and joy amid chaos. This is not the kind of peace you feel when everything goes as you want. Rather, you'll feel this calmness even when there's trouble around you. You will remain steadfast and confident. Also, you'll have hope knowing that God is in control. This peace not only guards your heart, it also comes with joy that is not reliant on circumstances. This joy withstands pain, trials, and sorrow. It also emanates from the conviction that Christ has conquered all, and it goes a long way to draw others to inquire about the source of your peace and joy, thereby drawing them to God. 
What an amazing lifestyle. But dear child of God, if this isn't your reality or anyone close to you, perhaps it's a sign you should get close to God and ask for His Spirit. Number two, an unquenchable hunger for the Word of God and His presence coupled with prayer. We love it. You can't claim to have the Holy Spirit. If you can't remember the last time you had a serious conversation with Him in prayers. Likewise, if you are close to someone who claims to have the Holy Spirit, but lacks a consistent word and prayer life, be careful. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, He stirs up a strong desire to immerse yourself in the Word of God. When Jesus Christ was speaking to His disciples about the Holy Spirit, He said the Holy Spirit would teach them all things. The Holy Spirit expands your knowledge about the Word of God. As you study, He opens your eyes to deep mysteries in the Scriptures, and as time passes, your witness, your knowledge of God, increase daily. He also strengthens your prayer life by guiding you to understand that communion with God is essential. Apostle Paul in Romans 826 says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. The Holy Spirit gives you sensitivity to God's leading. He helps you seek guidance and understanding through fervent prayer. Number three, activation of spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit equips you with spiritual gifts that empower you to serve God and lead others to Him. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 7, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. When the Holy Spirit inputs these gifts into you, be it prophecy, healing, teaching, or discernment, you need to have Him active and at work in you to manifest them. But you must know that these gifts are not for your elevation. Rather, they offer the greater good of the body of Christ, thereby magnifying God's glory. Number four, victory over sin. Any man who is living in sin is under bondage. Apostle Paul, speaking in the Bible, said that whatever act you master or allow it to take hold of you, you become a slave to it, and it deprives you of the things that have true value. Going further, be elaborated that whatever you will be is your master, be it sin or righteousness. This is one other thing that distinguishes a spirit-filled believer from an empty person. The Holy Spirit empowers you to live a victorious life over the bondage of sin. If you can say with boldness that you are no longer a slave to sin, this is because the Holy Spirit enables you to overcome temptation and resist the allurements of the world, otherwise you will be a prey to the devil. Individuals with the Holy Spirit are more sensitive to righteousness and they have an elevated desire to always walk with God and obey His command. Number five, boldness to preach the gospel of peace. The Bible gives an account of how Peter stood with boldness in the company of the other disciples and addressed the crowd on the day of Pentecost. After the Holy Spirit descended on them, their lives experienced to transformation, their speech changed as well, and they knew mysteries that no one could ever imagine. They'd know. Remember what Jesus Christ said when the Holy Spirit came upon them? He said there'll be His witnesses in different parts of the world. This is exactly what the Scripture portrays, despite being Jesus' disciple. Peter was always known to be one who entertained fear. It was the same fear that made him deny Jesus three times before he was crucified. But you can see that after the Holy Spirit came upon him, he took up the leader position and not battle alone. There was no trace of fear in him again to prove this. He preached in one night and one thousands of souls received salvation. This clearly demonstrates what the Holy Spirit does in a man's life. When preaching the gospel, the Holy Spirit must stir you up. Remember that you cannot give what you don't have. 
Without the Holy Spirit, you will waste your time speaking empty words to people. But with Him, you can be sure that He'll convict the hearts of the souls you preach to, and they'll receive salvation. Number six, humility and service. When Jesus Christ was on earth, He carried out His work as a leader by serving others. He exhibited humility everywhere He went. He never made it look like the whole world was under His feet. That is wisdom. In the same vein, when the Spirit of God dwells in you, you will be humble and ready to serve the people around you. Only an arrogant person sees himself as being better than others, and because of that, he wants people to act like his slaves. This is a clear sign of the devil at work. Being filled with the Holy Spirit instills a deep sense of humility and a heart of servanthood. Those with the Spirit do not seek exaltation or recognition for their works. Instead, they are always humble enough to offer themselves as vessels for God's purpose. They put the needs of others before this. They will never be happy until they see those around them joyful. Their lives always mirror the servant nature of Christ as they are diligent in serving others. They make Jesus known through acts of kindness and selflessness. Beloved, the Holy Spirit is ever ready to transform the lives of those who open themselves to His presence. These are a few of the many habits of a person filled with the Holy Spirit. You can also experience the same and even more. If you're willing, you will witness the profound impact of the Holy Spirit, and you'll receive empowerment to live an extraordinary life for Christ as His vessel. Your life is a radiant beacon that illuminates the path for others to walk in the truth. But amid your busy life, it can be easy to overlook the significance of nurturing your relationship with Him. So, to keep the Holy Spirit alive in you, aside from having an open mind, you must take deliberate steps to do certain things. Number one, surrender to Him and walk in total obedience to His leading. You must surrender your own will and entire being to Him. You must be humble and allow Him to mold you into a vessel worthy of use. As you let go of your desires and align your life with God's plan, the Holy Spirit empowers you to walk in obedience and righteousness. Obedience is not supposed to be a restrictive burden. Instead, it should be a gateway to freedom and intimacy with God. Be careful never to disobey the leading of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 429.30 says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit is to be your guide. But the moment you decide to disobey Him, He withdraws. Remember that He is gentle and will not impose anything on you. He can lead you in your everyday life in many ways. For instance, He can guide you in making the right decisions about any area of your life, be it how you interact with others or how you respond to situations. Sometimes He might give you a specific direction, as He did with Philip when He directed him to a certain road. Philip listened and obeyed without delay. And when he got there, he met an Ethiopian eunuch, and at the end, the Holy Spirit used him to explain the scripture to the Ethiopian eunuch. What if Philip had ignored this directive? The bottom line is that the Holy Spirit is to lead you. And as he does, so he'll help you live a life that honors God and reflects his character. So by humbling yourself, obeying him completely, and heeding his advice, you can be sure that you're moving on the right path. And as a result, you will be able to honor God in every aspect of your life. Number two, frequent interaction with the Holy Spirit. You might wonder how you're supposed to interact with Him when He's a spirit. Now answer this question. Have you ever conversed with God before? How did you do it? Or how have you been doing it? It's simple. Remember, the Holy Spirit is the one who helps you to pray to God. But don't forget that He is God as well. When you pray, you're communicating with three persons in one, God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. If you converse with Him more, 
you will have greater chances of enjoying his company for a long time. Wouldn't you want to experience this dear child of God to keep the Holy Spirit in your life requires your sincerity, intentional choices, and diligence. As you walk hand in hand with him, your life will become a testimony of God's love and grace. And this will no doubt unlock the abundant blessings of having a relationship with him. May God give you the grace to continue to strive to keep the Holy Spirit alive in your life. All will seek his guidance and experience the transformative power of his presence. God bless you. Let us pray. Dear Father, my heart is full of gratitude for your constant love and grace in my life. I acknowledge that you're my anchor and the only reason I'm still alive. Thank you for all the physical and spiritual battles you fought for me. Thank you for divine provision, protection, and guidance. Blessed be your name forever. I thank you for my family, friends, and well wishes for all the people you've granted access into my life for one reason or another. I am grateful. Thank you for the many times I stumbled but didn't fall because you helped me. I have nothing to say but the thank you. I present myself to you and ask for mercy. Your word says that if I claim to have no sin, I make you a liar. Cleanse me of my sins and wash me with your blood. Please purge me of every sinful habit. Make me a worthy vessel to the glory of your name. I lay every persistent sin in my life at your feet. Forgive me and give me the grace to sin. No more, ever, righteous God in heaven. I thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for sending a comforter to me. Your Holy Spirit has been my friend and guide. Thank you for the transformation I've experienced through your Holy Spirit. I pray for fresh unction to walk in the new directions. You're set to lead me to equip and strengthen me for the task ahead. I acknowledge that without you, I am nothing. Please continue to lead me to the right path, whichever assignment you've given to me that I failed to do, and it now looks like a burden. Please give me the grace to take it up and complete it to the very end. Please open my eyes to the truth of your word, your truth that enlightens. Please let it be the center of my life. In all that I do, help me to focus on you at all times. No matter how difficult it might be for me, may I be willing to sacrifice to the glory of your name. Above all, sweet Holy Spirit, please give me the heart to know when you're leading me. Open my spiritual eyes to understand all you want me to know. Whenever I get tired and fall by the wayside, please pick me up and strengthen me to complete the journey. Whenever I am reluctant to obey your instructions, please forgive me and help me to obey my comfort. Please help me never to grieve you at any point in my life. Let my relationship with you blossom like a tree planted by the riverside. Please do not leave my side. I cannot complete this race without you. You're God's precious gift to me, and I cherish you. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, for being my advocate. Amen. If this video has blessed you, don't forget to like, drop a comment, and subscribe.